a stolen freaking lever gun. I never would have imagined that something that climactic, anticlimactic would turn my day on its head the way that it did. But now, once this happened, it made me realize that all of our current gun laws, I think there's something like 40,000 gun laws from state to state, that are currently on the books, if they are enacted correctly, if they are enforced correctly, they are adequate. So, you know, basically we just come away from this whole Nashville shooting where this mentally ill individual decided to harm some innocent people and the Democrats and all of the anti-gun left, they always want to pair it. We need more gun control. We need more laws. We need this. No, today was a perfect example of how our current gun laws are adequate when enforced. So <laughs> with this being a long gun, I'm not going to tell you which state I was in. I'm not going to tell you anything. I don't want this, I don't want this gun store to, to experience any detrimental effects. But I stopped in at this gun store and I found this stainless steel gorgeous little lever gun that I just fell in love with. This thing was just beautiful. It was highly unused, untouched, unhandled. This thing was just immaculate. It's gorgeous. And now this fact is going to come around here just a short little bit and you'll see that. But now this little gun just, I fell in love with it. Here recently, I've taken a, a job with Ranger Point Precision. I'm doing some of their customer service stuff. I'm creating content for them. And quite frankly, the more lever guns I get my hands on, the better I can help you guys. I can make better content that's more informed. I can do a better thing when it comes to the whole customer service thing. And I never would have imagined that a Honda had to be that loud to move that slow. But, but anyway, the more of these lever guns that I get, the better off I am doing my job. So I saw this thing and I was like, dude, I've got to have that. I absolutely have to have that. I said, man, I've got cash. Does your price reflect credit cards or does it reflect cash? We struck up a deal. He threw out to 4473. I pulled my driver's license out, dropped it on the counter. And his assistant said, dude, you actually know what you're doing. I said, man, I've had so many freaking background checks. It's crazy. So I knew to go ahead and throw out my driver's license. Well, anyway, I'm sitting there filling out the 4473 and whatnot, you know, they take the paperwork and the phone rings. So then they come back over to the gun and they read the serial number off. Now, this is not uneventful. So my last three background checks, TBI has had to call about my last three background checks. So this is nothing that's unfamiliar to me. The first one was that SAR 9 Mate. I did a video on it. I'll drop a link below. The next one was a Winchester 94 that I'd found. I'd found a nice little Winchester 94 that's going to be an RPP project. That background check took an hour and a half, and they had to call. So this one, when, when they called to, for verification, it really just didn't trip anything in my mind. Well, anyway, I'm sitting here, and I'm all oblivious, and daggum, the door goes da-ding, and it, here comes the police through the front door. They said, yeah, we've gotten a call about a blah, 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 blah. And I said, holy crap. So anyway, they came, they took the gun. I told them, I said, tear up that 4473 and wipe my prints off that gun. I don't want anything to do with this. You know, it, it made me feel bad. I know I didn't steal the gun. It made me feel kind of embarrassed that I was trying to purchase a stolen gun, but I know it's not on me. But now where this comes around to this whole thing about the current gun laws, that gun was reported stolen. Nix, the National Instant Criminal Background Check System, Nix ping the thing. Local law enforcement stopped what they were doing. I mean, this was lunchtime. They were probably out trying to grab some grub. Local law enforcement stopped what they were doing. They hit that front door so fast, the police officer come through that front door, wiped the camera off. They got the little lens cover that turns their, their chest camera on, their body cam. He wipes in, wipes that off, and he says, I know why I'm here. You know why I'm here. That gun was just dinged. Anyway, uh, the guy was like, man, he said, that blows my mind. He said, I've had this gun for eight years. So what it is, is before he had an FFL, he had this gun. He had it for eight years. He decided to take that gun out of his safe and put it on his FFL books. It was just like this easy inventory thing for him. That way he could just bring in a gun, infu infuse his store with some cash, you know. So he had had this thing for eight years not knowing it was stolen. Today is the day we found out. Like, I found out that I'm not getting to leave with this cherry little stainless steel gorgeous 
you know, quite frankly, I don't have a stainless steel lever gun. I was going to be tickled to leave with this thing. Beautiful. And that didn't happen. So now, I guess, whoever it was that had this thing stolen uh, eight or more years ago, because there's no telling how long, I know the owner said that he had had it for eight years. So somebody somewhere is getting a phone call, and they're getting to pick up a beautiful little freaking lever gun. So I guess no matter how bad it sounds, it comes around good. But now, like I said, this proves that all of our current gun laws are perfectly done if they're enforced correctly. We don't need any more. This gun was stolen. The serial number was archived. I was not allowed to get it. The fact that I was going through a background check in the first place, the fact that the government was going to make sure that I was not a prohibited individual, that just proves that this whole system that's in place is adequate. Now, one could argue that it's unconstitutional, but this proves we don't need any more. So afterthought, walking back to the truck, you know, this little gun was so immaculate. The thing was gorgeous. It was so well kept. I was just super excited at the prospect of being able to purchase this thing. It was gonna give me a great deal of ownership, you know, the pride and ownership of this thing that I can just imagine how the person that it was stolen from is gonna feel when they get it back. You know, when you lose something, and you think about someone that would steal it, they disrespected you so much that they would disrespect your property as well. So you just think that when you get this gun back or whatever this thing is that's stolen from you, whether it be a chainsaw or a car, that it's probably gonna be trashed out. You know, like the oil is gonna need changed or this, it's gonna be scratched, it's gonna be dented, it's gonna be wrecked, whatever. When this person, if this person is still alive, when they get this little lever gun back, this thing is going to be just as perfect as the day they lost it. So I guess not all things are bad. Anyway, I guess y'all have a wonderful day. We'll see you next video. I love you, and I hate stolen lever guns.